Well, hello. It's it's really awesome to talk about the new season. It feels like a breath of fresh air coming when when 2020 hasn't been that great. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> You know, I was talking with the other guys about this, and I love the fact that the show doesn't get into the whole story about the pandemic, that it it, it does feel like an escape from some of the, the, the downside of reality right now. And yet you guys do have, you know, some serious topics this season. Uh, what was it like coming back to the show? It was so good to be with other people. Just just on that basis, it was just so good to be with other people because most of us have been um, in self-isolation of some kind or another. And uh, there was a time on the in the first week when Paul gave me one of his great big bear hugs. And and I I I had to break away because it had been so long since I'd been hugged that it was just like overstimulation. And I was about I was almost about to break into to tears. It was um, it was that was that just on its own was wonderful because we have a, a beautiful cast and crew. Everybody's so kind and so good at what they do. So just that pure pleasure. Um, it was a very different experience shooting in COVID. Um, but those challenges, I felt everybody met them with their best game. And, and I, I, I feel that we, you know, we all found ways to make it work for us uh, in, in what we do. And, and we're all proud of having made it through without a single case of COVID, but also without a single case of anybody getting a cold because we were all, our, our protocols were so, were so good that the usual sort of cold that somebody brought in from someone's daycare, you know, their kid brought, got caught from their daycare and then, and then whoever in construction or in sound or in what, in any other department, that didn't happen. We didn't have the usual like mid-season cold that was going around. That was kind of a revelation. What about you, Paul? What was it like coming back? Uh, no, Matt, like Gene said, I was just happy to be working again. Um, you know, especially when a lot of people weren't working. Mm -hmm. And not only that, I was very grateful for the fact that the producers really, really set up an environment where we were all safe. We all felt comfortable and safe and taken care of. I mean, there were a lot of things that had to happen too. We had to wear a lot of PPE, uh, you know, street, like hand sanitizing stations, um, separation of, of cast and crew to certain sections of, of the studio and everybody having to do that little bit of extra in order to facilitate everybody's safety. So for example, I, I really became very aware of how much work goes into putting makeup on um, for, because I'm, I'm relatively easy I just have a shiny, huge forehead. So it's, you know, they, they get rid of the anti-shine, but in between we would have to do our, our touches, our final touches. And that's, you get yourself ready just before you go to camera so that your hair is in place and your face isn't shiny. And I didn't know what I was doing. Like I'd never done it. So I've got this powder puff and I'm patting down my head and I'm just, I'm like Homer Simpson. Like I just keep doing it until somebody tells me to stop. Um, <laughs> and so there, there was a, a, a tremendous amount of joy in, in, in sort of <laughs> discovering that. Um, but again, it was just, being part of a community where everybody was doing their best to make sure everybody was safe in this work environment, because we are all depending on each other to continue the work and to keep each other safe. And I think that's kind of the best example of, of everybody doing, being selfless and doing it for the other. Because if one link in that chain falls, everything, it's like dominoes, they all go. And then before you know it, production stops. Um, there's so many creative solutions too. Yeah. Um, uh, like for instance, I wear a wig in the show, and it's a lace what? front, wig, and 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 the lace is down here. So the straps of a regular mask would pull the lace up, and just you know, just sort of talking with Sharon, but also like Dennis, our our boom operator is there with his arms up holding the boom, and he's listening. He's like, well, maybe you should build it like that, or maybe you should build it like this. And he came up with a great idea, and the next thing I knew, well, actually, the next thing that happened was everybody assumed that he would built it because I was saying. Dennis has this great idea. So then he built it and he printed it on 3D printer. So I ended up with this between takes. So I could mask up, be perfectly safe, protect other people and be protected myself, but without the straps going around the ear, pulling the wig off and creating a whole bunch of other problems. So someone in our sound department created a solution for cast and hair and makeup. That's, That's amazing. Yeah. That was my idea. Dennis stole it. 
<laughs> stole it. That's why nobody likes Dennis. Yeah, Dennis is genius. I think he's a d- g- genius, like three D printer. He, yeah, he figured it out. So what's coming up this season that you can talk about? Because I've seen the first episode, but I'll leave it to you guys to kind of fill in what's coming. I guess without spoiling it. Without spoiling it, of Andrew, course. that's so hard. I mean, <laughs> I, it's a, it's there's the usual hijinks. Um, you know, it is a family that that loves each other and loves to aggravate each other. Uh, there there are moments of of sheer joy, but really serious moments as well. Um, we, it, it, it's just a continuation of the storylines. Gene, can you can you elaborate? Yeah, I think one of the things that happened um, is that with COVID, the writers were really they really wanted needed to focus on the core relationships um, because you didn't want to bring in a lot of new actors necessarily new new is fine but they had to be important but and we like background basically was scenes that needed lots of background just posed too much risk so they did really focus on the relationships of characters that we've established and we love and that includes like the family like the the um all the relationships between mother husband um son and daughter but also in the in the handy world too so everyone can expect that their favorite characters are going to be back and if anything more featured and um and yeah the season five will take us back to a world without covid before covid in the before times <laughs> bc <laughs> Well, I mean, it's season five for Alma and Appa, um, uh, you know, and at the end of season four, they were really imagining themselves and sort of embracing the notion of being empty nesters, right? And life after kids. But one of the things that happens fairly early on in season five or has happened is that we have a boomerang kid, which uh, Janet is back uh, and living at home, which Honestly, as, as Oma is very happy about because, uh, you know, most Korean moms want their daughters home and close to home until they're married, basically to make sure that they get married right. <laughs> um, um, so that's 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 good. But it does put a damper on the on the uh, bucket list sort of thing. And and what we do see is is Oma and Appa approaching together. Um, uh, one of the challenges of growing older, which is like health problems. And how does that change the dynamic? How does that raise the stakes in their relationship? How does it, uh, what uh, internal challenges they, that they face? So yeah, that's, it's, it's satisfying to get into some meaty emotional um, scenarios. And I love that the way the show handles it is still, there's still such a great light element to it. And at the same time, the, the heaviness and the, the, the mm. honesty, I guess, as well. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Yay. <laughs> Your chemistry, you two, I mean, the heart and soul of the show for me is always their relationship and the way they, the way they just jive that feels so real and, and yet just a touch comical and, you know, <laughs> it, it, it's yeah. it's awesome do you guys spend time off camera kind of you know preparing for that or is it just you know you've had so much time already that it comes natural well paul and i've known each other for 25 years uh, more, so. more i think actually more now <laughs> i think we've been saying 25 years for the last couple of years um, <laughs> it was 1995 or so wasn't it uh yes oh, wow 25, 25 years um yeah. i think it was 94 actually might have been 94 but yeah, we come by it honestly. I mean, it, it's this is a relationship that has been going on for a while. Like I've known Jean longer than I know my my real wife, um, and it, it's this it's a byproduct of of for me. Uh, I mean, Jean took me under her wing when I was starting off from theater school and uh, really supported me as she did with a lot of other Asian actors and playwrights and directors and and was really somebody who who was a voice and a strong pillar for the community. Um, I'm and, so, him, that's all. <laughs> and so I, I learned a tremendous amount from Jean, but then having the pleasure of working with her, um, you know, and we do, we have a shorthand, we know each other and we like to play because it's like, it's like improvising a dance together, right? It's, yeah. it's, you can, you can dance to any tune, to any beat you go, because there's, there's that implicit trust in the other person uh, to hold you up or, or to go with you 
uh, and to, to try something really, really great. And it's it's wonderful to have somebody, uh, a scene partner who's so invested in the characters, in the truth, in the authenticity of these characters, but whom also you, you actually have genuine love and affection for, right? This is, you can't fake that. And it's just, it's it's such a joy to work with Gene. And Amazing. that chemistry is real. It's so real. Um, and I've, I'm really, really lucky. Really. We share a lot of history. Yeah. The, the two of us share a lot of history. And, uh, and that includes like the tour, right? Yeah. Those years of doing the show and touring. And, uh, but yeah, <laughs> Paul, I remember <laughs> we've known each other such a long time. Um, and I, I've, I've seen Paul perform in so many different contexts and admired him and admired the talent that he burst out into the, uh, into the scene when he first came out like Paul I remember when Paul um, graduated it was a time when when theater was just starting in Toronto was just starting to be diverse and they were just starting to be opportunities mostly ones that that were being created on the grassroots but more and more start in the in the mainstream and one of the first performances Paul that I really just thought oh my god this guy was that mom, dad, I'm living with a white girl. And Paul was so unbelievably hysterical. I was just gobsmacked. It was like, yes, finally, we've got somebody who can carry this. And I'm just um, feel really blessed to be working with him now and to call him friend. Love you. Love you too. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I, I love hearing these stories because there is so much history that, of course, you know, not everyone coming into the show even now will, will fully understand, but there's so much to kind of dive into. So I wonder too, like, have you guys ever thought about doing like a, is there a possibility of a documentary that would dig back further for, for fans today? Oh God, I don't know. I haven't thought about that. <laughs> there's a, there's a lot of photos of, of Paul with hair and me. Yeah. Well, you dropped that. She dropped that one picture. You dropped, uh, Jeannie dropped a picture of me at a fundraiser like years ago at the Rivoli. And I had my ears. It was was the Charlotte room. It was a pool club. Oh, really? Fundraiser for the Oklahoma project. You emceed, you emceed the, the rough. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't even remember that. Nice. All I remember is people freaking out online because A, I had hair. B, I was like a hundred pounds lighter. (laughs) And then C, I had earrings. And people were like, earrings? Really? Um, yeah. So they, you know, the next question is, well, what happened to that guy? And the answer is, I ate him. <laughs> <laughs> I well, remember, okay. yeah, oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. no, 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 I was I just going to go. I just, I remember um, a, a few days after Paul met Anna, his wife, bumping into him. Oh, shoot. Um, he, he literally came in and said, I met the woman I'm going to marry. And I was like, I, he was so sure. And I was like, she better be the right girl because if she breaks your heart, I'm going to kill her. <laughs> I'm going to have to. <laughs> so then I met her. I was like, yeah, she's the right girl. <laughs> I'm very fortunate. Yeah. Well, thank you both so much. And, and Paul, I have to say congratulations on the appearance in The Mandalorian, the two appearances. It's, it's just wonderful to see that kind of thing happen. And I, I see the, the Star Wars stuff behind you, which <laughs> is amazing. Just a bit of it, yeah. That that's this is my smaller collect. The the other stuff is the, the real gold is in the other room. But to thank you, yeah, it's dream come true. Like honestly, <laughs> uh, I'm still blown away by uh, that well, it even happened. So <laughs> it's amazing. I, I hope you get to come back or something. <laughs> yeah, you and me both, brother. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> well, thank you both and have a great day. Thanks, Thank Anne. you. Take care. Stay safe. Bye.